through three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. It's after show time where we gather to chat about this and that and the events of the day. We had a whole bunch of fun uh, on the show today talking about the whole bump stop thing, which seems to be evolving as we go along. We got Michelle, we got Jim. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, buddy. So, you, Jim, you still have your bump stock, right? You've been stocking up on them? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, 700 of them now. Uh, but I'm going to box them all up and I'm, uh, I'm shipping them off to. Uh, <laughs> send them to Clark. Yeah, send them to Clark. <laughs> And then, uh, oh, no, no. You, you, you want to send them to Eric Holder, right? I do want to send them to Eric Holder, but I liked your idea better. We're, you know, why, why delay the inevitable? Just ship them right to Mexico cartels. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I think we just send them straight to the Mexican cartels. I mean, Eric Holder did it. Why shouldn't we? That'd right. be a good thing to do. Cut out the middleman. We're good. Yeah. But what are you I'm gonna, liking this thing, yeah. What are you going to do with all your Levi's? That's true. <laughs> Cut, cut all the bu- cut all the uh, belt loops off of them. Okay, yep. okay, yeah. All right, got it. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Cute. Oh, Lordy. Hey, let's talk with uh, Randy and David. Not at the same time, however. <laughs> Randy's out of Atchison, uh, Kansas. Hey, Randy. Yeah, thank you. I've got a uh, question. Uh, I'm just, I got a concealed and carry. I just don't know what to carry. I work at a hospital, mm-hmm. and I'm not supposed to have anything there. But yet we got a gang that keeps coming in and irritating our clientele and other people. And I just didn't know if I should think about carrying in there or not. Boy, you know, that's honestly one of those questions nobody can come up with the answer for you. Um, Part of it, as you're noodling this around, depends upon, and I don't know Kansas is this a law that you can't carry in a hospital, or is this just a workplace requirement? Uh, there is actually a state law, but they've got it mislabeled on the doors. We're supposed to have either um, metal detectors and armed security, and we have neither okay. one of those either. Okay. So now what it amounts to is what you're risking is your job, because yes. if they find out, you could lose your job, right? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to take that chance? I thought about it real seriously. Okay. The problem is, where do yep. I hide it at? Okay, that's where I'm, I'm going to help you with that. I can't help you with the other decisions, but I can help you with that. Okay. Do you wear scrubs at work? No. Okay, so you're, are you wearing a jean type uniform? But you okay. know, I I reach up and work on the lights. I crawl underneath places. Right. Everybody can see what I got. I got you, I got you. I got the system for you. There is a system. It's deep concealment and it's not quick draw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called, Jim's already sending me notes, Smart Carry. Yes, it's called Smart Carry. And what it is is it's an elastic strap that goes inside your pants, just underneath, like just slightly lower than your belt line. And it goes, actually goes over your shirt. And there is a pouch in front that's, think of it as a jock strap almost. But it doesn't go around, it doesn't have a strap that you step through. And you can carry an amazingly, depending on your build, how tall, how lanky, how much belly you got these days, what kind of pants you're wearing. I know a, a guy who's a skinny little dude who wears jeans all the time. He carries a full-size 1911 in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, other folks like me who have a little bit of short torso, um, I mean, I'm limited to a fairly small gun because I just don't have... I've got, like, short legs and not much torso to work with there. But you could still carry an LCP, uh, a, a Smith & Wesson bodyguard, a 380 of some sort, even some of the small nines. And no one is ever going to know because people generally don't walk around staring at your crotch. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I've got an so, ankle holster, but I can't, you know, that slips down every now and then where you can see Yeah. It. And the other thing is it's going to get exposed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it just is. Let me just check something here. I'm going to make sure Smart Carry. We. It's been a long time since I bought Smart Carry, so we want to make sure there's. Yep, SmartCarry.com. It's still there. If you just go to SmartCarry.com, take a look at what they have there. Um, I, I think you're going to say, okay, I get that. That's. It's worth a try. And what you, I would do, I would suggest try wearing it not at work for several weeks. See if you're comfortable with it. See if it really is concealable the way you think. Think about what you do for work, climbing around, reaching up, all of that, and just carry that gun that way. 
and see if it works for you. But uh, I have really been a fan. Jim, you, you use your smart carry, don't you? Um, I use it uh, situationally. Okay. Uh, in a situation like uh, Randy described, it would be perfect for that. That's and I'm in that thinking. application, I do. But but otherwise, I use um, other carry methods because of the speed of the draw. Right. Yes, this is a slow system. But if something were to go down or you're hearing noises and things going on around you, although having said that, I will say uh, with practice, with unloaded gun, please, with practice, you can learn to draw fairly quickly from the smart carry rig. You basically reach down with, if you're right-handed, with your left hand, pull your belt out, suck your gut in, reach down, grab the butt of it, and pull it out, keep your fingers straight, make sure you didn't go on the trigger until your sights are on the target. Uh, but I would say you could probably make a draw in between three and five seconds. Oh, yeah. With that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And depending, you know, I do wear a belt, you know, sweatpants to work, or how do you dress? I wear a regular belt, a regular kind of like dress type jeans. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah the, the suck your gut in and use your left thumb on your, if you're right-handed, left thumb on your belt to pull it out, and you, you can draw a real, t- it does does take a little bit of practice, uh, like Tom mm-hmm. said, okay. but it's uh, it's not like it's going to take you 45 minutes to pull the thing out, but right. it, uh, the upside to that uh, is that it's not going to fall out either. Mm-hmm. It's not going to fall out, and it really is, as they say on their website, virtually invisible. Yeah, you can, you can't tell. Okay. Well, that's, that settles a lot. I'll start looking at that when I get back to some place where I get it to a computer and we'll kind of start looking at it. Yeah, if it gives you any indication, okay, Randy, good. Randy, I've gone through three of them over the years. Okay. So they, uh, you so know, it's made out of cloth and each one's lasted me about six, seven years. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. No, not at all. Because, yeah, it's not leather. It, it's cloth because it needs to fold. It needs to, you know, be. And, you, and you need to wash it. it. Be. You got to wash it every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yep, there's that too. It's uh, so yeah, smartcarry.com. Check it out, okay? All righty. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate that. I tell you what, let's do this, guys. Uh, we took a little bit long. We'll let David, don't go anywhere. I got to take a quick break here. We're going to come back. I got David in Texas. We're going to get to him. Uh, we'll be right back. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. It's the next generation target pistol, the SW22 Victory from Smith & Wesson. Stainless steel frame, interchangeable match barrel, thumb safety, fiber optic sights, and a Picatinny rail. The SW22 Victory is ready for anything, targets or small game. Also available with a threaded barrel or cryptic camo finish. And it's backed by the Smith & Wesson Lifetime Service Policy. Learn more about the SW22 Victory at smith-wesson.com. All right, we are back uh, with more of the after show here. We got uh, David uh, has been kind enough to stay with us. Uh, David, how are you, sir? Just fine, Tom. It's good to be on uh, on your show again. Well, I, I appreciate you calling in. It sounds like you got an idea here. I read an article in the Chicago Tribune uh, back in 2018, and uh, they're talking about how uh, Governor Cuomo is uh, in league with some of these large banks, the largest banks in the world, J.P. Morgan Chase and Bank of America, mm-hmm. are uh, right. denying services, and uh, the insurance companies are denying services to them also. And they, uh, you know, gun manufacturers live and die by their insurance companies. Of course. And, uh, and uh, I also uh, would like to... Uh, Talk to talk to you about how the uh, NRA and Congress need to bolster our First and Second Amendment rights because uh, uh, one without the other is is pretty useless. True enough, and it kind of gives me an opportunity to talk about something that I think people need to get a realistic view of what we can and what we cannot do in Congress, especially. Um, unfortunately, the Republicans are. As worthless as mammary glands on a male pig, <laughs> in many cases. Um, when we had com- 
complete control of the House, the Senate, and the White House, they couldn't get anything done for us on gun rights. We couldn't get reciprocity passed. Uh, we couldn't get, well, actually, we couldn't get any of our big bills passed because they just wouldn't. What I would like people to understand is if we couldn't do it then, there's not a prayer of getting things like the Hearing Protection Act of getting silencers taken off the list, of getting reciprocity. None of that is going to happen with the Democrats in control of the House. We won't even get it out of the House. And the best we can hope for right now is to try to preserve the Senate as a firewall against stuff and junk that's going to be pouring out of the House with Pelosi behind it. We're going to get all these gun ban measures being thrown out whether it's red flag laws or whatever it happens to be, background checks, and we're going to have to stop it in the Senate, but we're not going to get anything passed that's good for us. I mean, it might be a little bitty thing that gets attached to something, but well, once this again, is not going to be a good two years. Yeah, once again, we're playing defense. Yes. It's like they're content with playing defense because it's you know less less wave making. Well, a bunch of crap. Why? I th- I, you're right, but then that kind of leads me back to that same old horse that I ride all the time, which is, why are the Republicans content? Because we let them be content. Mm-hmm. If we threw them out on their asses, if we said, okay, I don't care that you're a Republican. You didn't support us here. You're gone. Mm-hmm. If we showed up by the tens of thousands, where we can't get six people to show up right now, we could get stuff done. But Gun owners go, ah, well, you know, I've got a job. And I always love, they say, well, you know, those other people, they don't have jobs, so they could go protest. No, everybody has a job. Everybody has the same number of hours in a day. Everybody has money issues. Some people just think it's more important. And right now, it looks like the gun ban side is more energized and thinks it's more important. I mean, you can't even get gun owners to agree that we should have certain kinds of guns. Some of the hunters still go, yeah, you know. Who needs an AR-15? Who cares about bump stocks? Yeah. Who cares about bump stocks? Exactly. Yep. There has recently, though, been a bill introduced by a couple of pro-gun senators, I think um, just a couple of weeks ago, and it was to prohibit discrimination against the fi- with the financial services. Yes. It's actually uh, introduced the- uh, by Senator Kevin Carr. Kramer from mm-hmm. North Dakota and John Kennedy John from Kennedy. Louisiana. It's right. called S-821, the Freedom Financing Act. Yep. And so there's at least some recognition from the Senate that this is happening. It's going on, to yeah. Try, right. yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, whenever there's anything mass shooting of any sorts to the media's definition, they automatically go into that chokehold. <laughs> and they just double down on why would you, you know, it wasn't bad yeah. enough that uh, we can't get gun laws passed. Now, why would you bother giving money to people who sell these types of items? Right. right? I mean, I'm looking at the description of this Freedom Financing Act. It says it aims to put a stop to discrimination, uh, this discrimination by ensuring that banks participating in certain federal programs, as well as credit card companies, credit unions, and users of the automated clearinghouse network, cannot refuse business with law-abiding federal firearms licensees for political or, quote, reputational reasons. Right. It would be nice if we could get that passed, and that one, I guess, could have a chance where you could say, okay, you can't, you know, strip, you, you can't deny lawful businesses access to financial services on the basis of politics. Now, the other side is going to come back and say, well, yeah, but that's a private business. They can do whatever they want to. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, they're certainly willing to try to push the uh, private businesses into blocking uh, services to gun industry and gun stores. And, and, you know, Michelle, that's an interesting thought. Everybody thinks of gun makers, but it's not just gun makers. Mm-mm. It goes all the way down to the individual retailers. Right. I mean, it comes down to the simplest thing of you being able to swipe your card or insert your chip to make mm-hmm. a purchase. And it doesn't have to be on a gun because it's from a Gun store. Gun store. I mean, yeah. it can be with the credit card service companies come in and say, "Okay, oh, you're a gun store? No, you can't. We will not process any credit card uh, services for you right. at all. No right. charges. Right. So, so you, yeah. your store becomes a cash only store. Right. So I mean, if you wanted to buy earmuffs because you're mowing lawn, I can't do it in my store. Right. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. know, something that simple. Buy binoculars because you're a bird watcher? Mm, nope. Right. Nope. Can't do it. 
Okay. Now, but yeah, your store basically cannot process uh, credit card sales. And honestly, if you had to make a, just a guess, what percentage of your sales are credit card sales? A 98%. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I mean, nobody, you got to be old like me to carry cash. Yeah. When somebody says, yeah. hey, can I pay in cash? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? You're like, ask I, okay, yeah. yeah. Cause, you know, most people don't. They don't. It, it's, uh, it's probably funny to say, can I, you know, can I pay cash? And a lot of places, if you have a young checker, they're kind of going like, I, I don't know how to process that. <laughs> do, do we have a form for that? Yeah. I don't, you know. Right. It's, it's like you really stop them. It's, yeah. it's crazy. But well, uh, the, the whole thing is just so discriminatory. If it was a, uh, you know, hypothetically, if it was a um, uh, African-American company selling hair care products. And they were told, no, I'm okay. sorry, we can't do business with you. That would be monster lawsuit, and rightly so. But mm-hmm. because it's firearm industry, it's like, oh, it's wicked, it's evil. It's- well, uh, what else? It is the last safe area for bigotry. Yeah, that's one <laughs> way to put it, yeah. Right. So, you know, so what do we do? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this thing goes somewhere. But, you know, when I'm, I, I just, it's funny. I mean, I keep getting these emails from people say, you know, well, they should uh, you know, get back in there and fight for reciprocity. I'm going, Really? Have you looked at what happened with the midterm elections? Mm-hmm. You know, have you looked at who is deciding what bills are brought up for the House right now? What do you think the chances are that Pelosi is going to say, yeah, we ought to bring up that vote for reciprocity, see if we can't move that one forward? Isn't 2020 the year it lines up where everybody's replaceable? Senate, House, everything mm-hmm. lands on the same No, the, it never happens for the Senate. No, no, the Senate is every two years. So you, you run through a third of them every two years. Okay, I thought they had a segment in 2020 where it lines up where the entire house, no. I guess, is up for. Well, the house is always up for sale. Up for sale. <laughs> That's just something that I wish. I wish it was that simple. Got the right number. <laughs> did I really say it? I guess I did. <laughs> You're not off base either, really. No, I actually is not necessarily wrong. But yeah, they uh, everybody in the house has to be reelected every two years. But in the Senate, the six-year term, and a third of them run for re-election each uh, two years. So, yeah, there's no time when they all have okay. to run. Okay. But I do think it's critical to reach out to the senators and have them influenced to help pass this along. And, and any future endeavors, too. I mean, obviously, we're, we're being choked out. Sure. You know, there's another thing here, and I, we've talked about this through the years, of politics, especially Washington, D.C. politics is often a game of subtleties. And the subtleties are often lost on people who are not in that world. Like there's stuff going on, and you're going, eh, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm thinking about people are just losing their minds and going crazy over the NRA and their stand on, uh, say, red flag laws. Okay. And look, and you guys know, uh, I have had my things to say about the NRA. But in this case, if you're in that environment, and what you're hearing is, we have no way to stop this. Your Congress people are saying this is going to go through. Okay. It's that's. It's not like gee, if you, only you did this, you could stop it. They're saying this is not stoppable. Okay, this is going to go through. So what do you do? Well, one of the rope a dope things you can do is say, well, you know what? We're not necessarily opposed to this, but what we think is that we want to make sure that due process is included in any of these. What they're really saying, and that, and that just drives the gun people crazy. They say, well, they said they're not you know, opposed to it. What they're actually saying is, if you want to do a red flag law, you need to make it so that you have to go before a judge and the party that the claims are being, the charges are being made against, gets to go to court and defend himself or herself and actually have due process and all of that before this happens. Wow, well, that's a novel idea. Okay, well, except that the whole idea behind the red flag laws from the gun ban folks mm-hmm. is they, they don't want that because right. they want to be able to do this to people mm-hmm. without them even knowing it was done to them until the cops show up with the SWAT team and take all your guns. So what the NRA is actually doing is saying, we're basically going to kill this sucker by requiring due process in the, in the whole deal. But it, as I say, it's a game of subtleties. And unfortunately, a lot of NRA members are going, oh, my God, they're in favor of these red flag laws. Except no, who pay- you're, you're just missing the subtlety of the whole thing. Who pays for that, though? Who pays for what? Who pays for the due process? 
who pays for the appearances? You're there representing well, yourself and paying your own way? You, you, you know. Of course you are. Anytime mm-hmm. you would be, uh, certainly, I mean, if you were charged with a crime, you would be pros- you would be taking care of your own right. defense in right. that in this case. But yeah, I, I see where you're going with it. Right? Because how many times can you have to appear? I mean, can you be <laughs> see where I'm going? Like somebody repetitively sure. Cause, claims. Cause keep doing. Yeah. If if your ex wife keep making those claims about you, yeah. You know, well, he told me that he was going to blah 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 yeah. blah. You know. Yeah. Go, and yeah. then her friend Which calls is, in and is like, you know, yeah. Because this That's is what point. happens. Well, and I think what happens in that case, then you have legal recourse to go after them. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would assume that would be you the would case. Hope that I mean, would I, be, yeah. Look, I watched many episodes of Perry Mason. <laughs> oh, so then you're, I you're know an expert. all about the law an and, and, and Boston legal, too. <laughs> so, I mean, and if you can't learn the law from William Shatner, who can you learn right. the law from? <laughs> well, you know, the, the whole BS about this is there already are procedures, legal procedures, if somebody is a nutcase, of course. to prevent them from, if they're, once they're adjudicated. And that, and that is lost in the conversations a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Okay, but let's get to the, the real issue here, right? This is all an infringement upon your rights. Every one of these yes. things. Every yes. single one of them. But it's become them. so commonplace. Uh, people just accept it. Yep. This is not acceptable. Amen. <laughs> well, it's like I still don't accept the idea that you can't buy guns through the mail. Because when I was growing up, you could order them from Sears, Sears and they would Robux. mail them in yep. Sears Roebuck. Go to your house. I you know, didn't know they even order had them it. out of the back of the the Boys Life magazine, right? I didn't even know they and had they would postal send a gun service to you. when you were younger. Didn't they? <laughs> it was Pointy Express. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's take guy rides months. up on a horse and throws a package out there. Gun, and it's got a big sign on it, a big old smile on the side of the box. Yep. <laughs> so, <yeah>. Nice. <laughs> Oh, my. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, you make a really good point, Michelle, which is we accept as normal stuff that we shouldn't. Right. I mean, because we're like, okay, well, you know, it'll get us this far. It'll get us this. It'll shut them up with this. But that's the problem. It only stops them on that one thing. Okay, so this tactic. They have 70 tactics in place while we're working on one. Where we're, we're kind of counter right. effort against this it, thing. You know, you got is it Tom Steyer, the uh, billionaire, and of course, then you got Soros, you got Bloomberg, and you know, you got these guys pouring the money into it. One of the, you know, that's part of it. Part of it, frankly, is that our team, gun owners, tends to sit on its butt collectively. We don't show up. We don't get involved. We're certainly not involved in, say, city council elections. Where do you think the mayor comes from? The mayor comes from the city council. Mm-hmm. Okay, where do you think the governors and the state senators and representatives come from? They come from the mayors or from city councils. Mm-hmm. Where do you think your U.S. senators and your U.S. representatives come from? They generally come from the state house, your legislators, or from mayors. Mm-hmm. If you get involved when they're running for city council, you get the right people. Mm-hmm. Oh, the same holds true for school boards. Absolutely true. You know? Perfect example. Yeah, you know, we're going to complain about their zero tolerance policy at the school, you know, schools. How many school board meetings have you been to? Well, about approximately zero in my lifetime. But I still want to bitch so, about it. But I'm going to bitch. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> you know, I'm going to sit at home and watch TV. Or I'm not s- going to get up and go to that seven o'clock school board meeting tonight. No, I'm not going to do that one. But I'm going to bitch about whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your circle of friends. You, you have mutual thoughts, <laughs> comments that are shared amongst those friends. You need to get outside of those circles. It's uncomfortable. Get off of Facebook. Yeah, get mm-hmm. off of Facebook, or actually get on Facebook. Create a group. But the group is to go do things. That's where you can connect with people. You know, I mean, that's what folks do. They use social media to connect and then, but you got to take it further than that and say, okay, we're all going to get together at Shoney's at, for an early five o'clock dinner. And then we're all going to the school board meeting. We're all going to the city council meeting. And that's going to be what we do once a week. We're going to some meeting somewhere and we're going to be showing up. All five of us are all it's gonna 10 have, of us. Uh, it's going to have to be is. Denny's in our area. We don't have Shoney's that's, up here. That's a, where, wherever you go, though, wherever you go, make sure everybody eats baked beans. And then you can have like <laughs> yeah. a, you know, a uh, chemical warfare. A I like out. this. <laughs> <laughs> Weapons of mass destruction. Blazing saddles. Board meeting. Wow. <laughs> They'd want to vote and get oh, you out quick. Lordy. Yeah, whatever the guy wants, just get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, why, why aren't we on the regular show more often? <laughs> How are we relegated? I can't to the imagine after why you've been relegated to the after. And pretty soon we're going to have to have the after the after show. 
post after. Oh, I think we, I think we have to take a, a break now. Oh this God. break is brought to you by the local gas utility. Oh, uh, Bino. <laughs> Your everyday carry advantage. The new M&P Shield M2.0 pistol from Smith & Wesson has the enhancements of the M2.0 line with aggressive grip texture and a crisp and lighter trigger pull. Extremely thin and lightweight, you can carry it all day. Also available with an integrated crimson trace laser in 9 or 40. The M&P Shield M2.0. Visit smith-wesson.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Oh, my goodness. So, wait, 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 wait. We have had a cosmic shift. We've had Teutonic plates have shifted. We have a difference in the answer when I ask the question, so, Jim, how's that forty five seventy shooting for you? <laughs> I'm sure glad it's a rifle round and not a pistol round. She's a, she talks to you. <laughs> she a bark, won't she? She's a barker. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Now, now, my uh, full... Uh, Disclosure. In the spirit of full disclosure, uh, four rounds was enough. <laughs> what? I, I only racked off four rounds. I was in a hurry and I had to get it done. So I wanted I wanted to feel it and make sure I could hit stuff and I could hit stuff and I and did you lose feeling? And I felt <laughs> by, by then he had already gone past the road sign and he had, didn't have anything to shoot at. Right, so. right. Wow. I mean it's a it's a barker. I can't and can't imagine it with any hotter loads than I had. There was plenty. Really, really good recoil like pad. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Does cool. it have a recoil pad on it? Yeah, it yeah. does. It mm-hmm. does. It's come stock with one. I wouldn't, you know, go out and try to shoot a thousand rounds a day with the thing, but it was cool. It's really cool. Where's your testosterone? What? Well, <laughs> man up for heaven's sake! <laughs> Jeez. All right, Michelle, take away his man card. Over there, no please. kidding. Sure. I guess. Wow. Oh, God. I can't wait to see the mail so, that comes in right. on that one. There's, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. a device called, uh, remember the past pads, mm-hmm. Michelle, yep. those shoulder pads? Yep. I think they still have those. Mm-hmm. They do. Uh, yeah, we can get you one of those. It's a little, I mean, it's a nice Oh, no, pad. come uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> they still make those mercury I, pads, or are those illegal now for EPA it's, it's great when you're using the mercury pad and it blows up and you spray mercury, toxic mercury all over the place. Sure, no, sure. Don't use that. No, the past pass, P-A-S-T. Okay. Uh, I've used them a lot, actually, when you're out shooting big guns. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I like big guns. Oh, wait, wait, that's a different deal. <laughs> uh, so. He hangs you know, out uh, a lot of gymnasiums and stuff just to <laughs> see the guys walking <laughs> When out. you're shooting 375 H&H or 416s right. and you need to do some practicing, you want these. And, frankly... And people are saying, well, the 4570 isn't that powerful, but yeah. this is a lightweight rifle. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, if this were in an eight and a half, nine pound rifle, it'd be one thing, but this is a, probably a five and a half pound rifle. Right. And it, it, make, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And it wasn't unmanageable by any means, but I could see why mm-hmm. you, you rack off 40, 50 rounds of that at two bucks a round. Oh, yeah. Um, How much? Two, oh, just shy of two bucks a round. Ooh. Yeah. Well, okay. I didn't buy the cheap stuff, you know, buy something good. Of course not. Of course but, not. Uh, it, it rocked me, but it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't unmanageable. I just wouldn't do it for a whole afternoon. Yeah, seriously, though, if you really are going to shoot this much, uh, getting a passed pad is not a bad way to go. Look into that. They're really handy, and it just becomes so much more pleasant to shoot. Does it change your length uh, of pull and stuff and all that moves away from you? It does, you know, but you don't expect to hit anything anyway, right? That's me. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's really why I stopped at no. four. <laughs> He became a flincher and he's like, forget it. <laughs> Batting a thousand, four like, rounds, nope, haven't hit it. anything. Can't do it. <laughs> Hate to actually slip and hit something. They say, well, what'd you hit? Ohio. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah. Oh, oh, you guys know oh, I'm boy. safer than that. Yes, yes. Yes, you are. And But but it's so much fun. I do love lever actions. Yeah, but you know, it's interesting you mentioned that. 
it is one of the reasons that I think people enjoy pistol or handgun cartridge lever action so much Mm -hmm. because there's essentially no recoil. Right. Well, that's that's my next thing. When when my buddies come over, I'm going to have the 327 set up and the 4570, and have them shoot a couple 327s. And okay, that's nothing. Do you that's have a 327 true. lever action? I don't spread it around because then Michelle would hey, take it from me. He yeah. has one with a large loop. I have a large loop. <laughs> 327. Lever. He has a large loop of 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 affliction. I can't even say it. Affinity. <laughs> no affliction. Oh. Well, we're, I think we know who's afflicted here. Yeah, it may not it's be the Jim. recoil. I was feeling it. <laughs> I was going to blame the Beano, but... I thought she was just talking about your large loop, buddy. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. Wow. Oh, we're going to get my. thrown off podcast, even. <laughs> All yeah, right. they used to be on the podcast, you know. Yeah, I thought I was safe being on the after show, but now you guys turned it around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beyond hope. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, 327. Man, you start shooting like 32 H&R in there, or what's a 32 is it long? 32 longs. 32, They're fun, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's like shooting 22s. Yeah, and then have somebody shoot a bunch of rounds of that, then hand off the 4570. They're going to, oh, it's just another lever action. They're going to expect yeah. similar results. As long as you load right, the man. ammo first, they don't get to see it. Yeah. <laughs> that's like Jeez. five of those other ones. Yep. <laughs> But you got to go do some research on the forty five seventy cartridge because it is has a great history. I mean, that's what uh, yeah, you were telling me a little Custer's, bit about. Custer's yeah. men had with them, and the trapdoor Springfield. And it was originally a black powder cartridge, and you know, just it's it, that's one of the reasons that they have to load it down so much for factory loads is because it'll go in those weak action trapdoor Springfields. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Destroyed. you can't buy heavier loads for it that are certified for you, should be safe in your Marlin. So that and, would be kind of fun. Yeah, imagine that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> more powerful loads. I more pressure, that. yeah. I need that. I'm under enough pressure as it is. Oh, oh, you mean barrel <laughs> pressure. Never mind. Now, the fun part is to take that out and then get you some fun targets like buckets. Mm-hmm. Put them out at 75 to 125 yards. Or you can hit them and roll them with a big old pumpkin ball bullet of that thing. Right. You know, paint cans, something like that. Man, that is fun. You could do the whole Quigley Down Under thing. I like it. I just like the lever. I mean, I know it sounds silly. It's just cool. It makes you feel like a cowboy. I didn't work out <laughs> Where so good are you for Custer. One? I but, know. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so if, if you want to feel like a cowboy, have you, seriously now, have you ever considered going to a cowboy action match? I haven't, no. You might want to find one, not necessarily to shoot, just to go and see what it's about. Yeah, I've um, seen YouTubes on them. I think they're really cool, actually, but I never actually it's thought about it. crazy fun. And, you know, I know it can look weird on the outside looking in and go, oh, they're wearing cowboy clothing and isn't that cute and all. But once you're into it, it's a fun bunch of people and you're shooting cool guns and they have these cool events and everything. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's might similar. might be going to go one. Yeah, I mean, I may because I, I've attended... Um, Civil War and um, reenactments and stuff. Right. Re- Revolutionary War reenactments, too. And I, I thought that was really cool. And the, the costume thing, I've, these people are really into it. It's kind of neat. And then the cowboy I action think stuff does take is, a step further. I think you get all your cowboy action stuff, and then you show up at a Renaissance fair. <laughs> with, <laughs> and they have swords, and you win. <laughs> The chink is the last That's thing okay. you're going to have to worry about in your armor, pal. <laughs> I'm shooting pumpkin balls over here. All right, Jim, you love this. So we're going to, we're going to the range yesterday. Mm-hmm. We're driving down the interstate, and we're passing up one of these three-wheel motorcycles, right? Yeah, trikes. And this guy's got his vest on, his hat. I mean, he's, he's there. He's got his rig. As we're going by him, we look. And he has on a six-inch barrel, single-action revolver and an open-carry holster uh, on, his, on his side. And I'm just thinking, okay, that's pretty darn interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Wouldn't have been my choice, but you know, it's his choice. That's okay. To each their own. Yep, no kidding. So, Something you know, tells that, me that, that. Uh, it probably reduces road rage potential from other drivers. Come on, you idiot on the butt. Oh, well, never mind. Have a good day, sir. <laughs> I saw road rage yesterday. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, going down this road, just regular city road, and the 
lane opposite me coming toward me. This car stops in the middle of the lane. Car stops behind him. And the first driver in the first car jumps out and runs back to the second car. Oh, stop. And is screaming at this guy. And the interesting part was the guy in the car, the second car, the one behind, he rolls down his window. Oh, oh. bad move. I'm thinking, okay, this is a tactical error. Yeah. Why roll you, down you, a window just, when you can shoot through it? You know, just yeah, keep it up. He can't punch you if you got your window up. He can't reach in and grab you. Mm-hmm. He can't hurt you, you know, as far as putting his hands on you. So don't roll down the window. And, I'm, and I just said, mm, yeah, I don't want to be here. I'm Just keep driving. Just, I'm, I'm not part of this. I have nothing involved in this. Thing. Plus, if you think, well, I'll just roll down the window a little. Once you roll the window down, it weakens it and it makes it super easy to punch through it. Break it out. I was thinking about rolling down my window and yelling, don't roll down your window. But that didn't happen. <laughs> Only yeah. idiots roll down their windows. Meow. <laughs> 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 Oh, well. This is a good example, though, as to why to leave enough room for an exit. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. What's, what's the rule when you stop in traffic? You need to be able to see the rear wheels of the car in front of you yep. and where the tires touch the pavement. Yep. That's going to require you to be about a length and a half, two lengths back. Mm-hmm. So you can go and don't stop in the middle lane of three lanes. Right lane, left lane. That way you can just you can turn right, you can turn left, you can go do what you got to do to get away. Uh-huh. But you're right. I'm as guilty as anyone. I get to not thinking about that, and then I find myself I've stopped and I'm too close to the car in front of me. And I'm thinking that's stupid. <laughs> I know better than that. Yeah, I, knew, I know I need more space than that. Yeah, and even if you're not the, f- the full car length and a half, if you can still jack your steering and, and go left or right to get the hell out. That's that's what you want to be. I do that at stoplights yeah. and everything because you don't know. I was going to say, it doesn't even have to be road rage. I mean, it can be a railroad crossing no. and somebody's angered. Who knows? In front and back. You don't know where yeah. it's going to come from. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's how you know is if you can see the rear tires of the car in front of you where they touch the pavement. If mm-hmm. you can see that line, you you're good. for your man. Yep. Yep. Exactly right. So, oh, we just shot some more uh, first-person defender last week uh, using a local store that let us. They closed up and let us go into a convenience store awesome. and use their real store. It's um, it's always interesting when you have a total rolling fist fight through the wine racks. No, we didn't do that, but that would have been fun. <laughs> do you want the so, thirty-seven bags of Fritos in your video bag there, Tom? Uh, <laughs> really. <laughs> So, but yeah, that'll be, uh, we'll have those out in a few weeks. Cool. Uh, always fun doing the first person offender stuff. Heck yeah. Huh? Always surprising. You never know what people are going have to you do. Guys done, have, done, we, have you folks done a uh, road rage version yet? I was just going to say, and now you've yes. got the new experiment here. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have the, we did road rage. Ryan was uh, in the car. Actually, you know what? It was, I think it was Greg Lappin in front of him. And you know, Greg. Uh, it's like, not the you know, guy I would want to start a road rage. Not the guy you'd want to start a road rage, yeah. <laughs> and he gets out, and, you know, yada, yada, and then he just starts uncorking right into the windshield of Ryan's truck, oh, you know, his personal truck. You know, whap, 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 whap. It's like, okay, so let's talk about how this went and what can we have done. So we worked on, uh, of course, obviously de-escalating, getting out, but also if you had to shoot from inside your vehicle, Crack opening the door and leaning out, but using that A pillar as protection. Ah, uh, another another thing you can do. I never, I never thought of this one. One of those in tot moments. I never thought of that. Is when it happens, reach over and crank your seat back down so you can barely see over the top of the dash. Okay. Well, sense. now you're not offering very much of a target now mm-hmm. to someone, but you can still draw your gun and be ready just to sit up, and you can shoot right through your windshield. Huh. And trust me, I have shot through windshields, and it works just fine. Yeah, and then the car dealer was a little reluctant to finance you after the test. Well, ride. Hertz but... really got upset about the rental car thing. You know, <laughs> do you have the full coverage? <laughs> you know. okay. Well, the A pillar thing is a perfect, perfect example on why you should practice left-handed if you're a righty. Well, yes, but. One of those deals. It's amazing what you can actually just lean over a little bit and you can shoot right-handed around the A-pillar fine. I don't advise people trying to switch hands unless they absolutely have to. I think you're better off if, like you're a right-handed shooter, just go ahead and go around the left side but keep your two-handed grip because you're just going to be better at it. Okay. You're not exposing more target of yourself that way, though? 
Not really. Uh, I mean, if, if you're going you're to use the same eye, and unless you're going to switch and use your left eye when you're shooting left-handed, mm-hmm. you're still going to expose the same amount of your head. Now, you know, if you wanted to close your right eye and use your left eye to aim, that's going to reduce the amount of your head that sticks out behind the barrier. But now we're getting into the kind of weird tactical area right. where it's really, you're not going to do that in a real fight. Gotcha. Okay. I just that's figured that's kind of my take on it. I figured my head is probably the least vulnerable part of my body, and if I had to get hit somewhere, you know, bullets bounce off, right? <laughs> Lead with your head, Jim. That's what my yeah. sensei used to tell me. Lead with your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what he was trying to tell you there, but we'll leave that one alone. So. Okay, so two. All right, first of all, two dollars a round is too much to pay. Okay, so you need to find a better source of ammo for that forty-five seventy. Okay. Just saying, uh, you don't. I don't think you have to pay that. Much. Now, yeah, if you're buying the high price spread of, you know, like Hornady's Lever Evolution or something like that, mm-hmm. but it's specializing really good stuff. But just for everyday cowboy action type, look for cowboy action style or you know stuff because it's going to be low power and a little bit less expensive. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Ammo Seek is your friend. You know, ammo seeks my friend. Unless yeah. Michelle will cut you a really smoking deal on some ammo well, there at the store. See, that's I should have gone to Cleveland's in the first place. There's my mistake. <laughs> well, if you, yeah. Boy, I have, speaking of which, I have been hearing lots of people who have kind of finally figured out they need to go to gun stores instead of big box stores. Well, I was just going to say, Tom, you're telling them to go online and buy ammo. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, well, I know. I know. You got to, you know, do what you got to do. But. I think the big box stores are getting even worse. It may be some of the conglomeration that's going on. Uh, but I'm just hearing lots of stories of bad service. Uh, well, they're clerks. People behind the gun counter who don't know anything. They're clerks. They're, no, not, and, they're not gun experts. They're, they're yeah, minimum wage clerks. Good point. Yeah. Now, I mean, now to be fair, some of the folks who work in gun counters at big box stores are gun people. But it's interesting. That doesn't necessarily mean they know anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you have to have been I've out in the it. field doing it, right? I mean, to really I understand seen, things. Yeah, I've seen the most outrageous, stupid things being told to people from somebody behind the gun counter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just most of the time, I just walk away. But every once in a while, I walk in and go, "Okay, I know this is not going to make me any friends behind the counter." Right. But I can't let this go by. Yeah. This is the perfect yeah, gun for everyone. I love that yeah. one. Or, oh, everybody or, should have this. Or just saying things that are factually incorrect about calibers or guns or, or whatever. You know, they're just going, no. I mean, like I said, most of the time I just walk away. But uh, every once in a while you're going, no. Yeah. And the thing is, you've got to find a way, if you're going to do it, try to find a way to do it and let the person behind the counter save face. You go, well, you know, that may be true most of the time. But, you know, it's, I have found blah, 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 blah. And then you got to find an exit point because, you know. well, especially on a safety issue, you you can't just walk away on that. Well, that's a different deal. Yeah, no, we do not uh, skimp on safety issues. We just go ahead and say it. And if you make people mad, you make people mad. I was having that conversation yesterday at the range and uh, telling one of my stories of, and you guys know me. I don't often talk that way, but we had a guy on one of our video shoots. One of these people that came in, actually, it was the first person to vendor shoot, but we had live ammo session part of it and he muzzled us a couple of times mm. and uh so i just went over i had forgotten i just wouldn't think i was going to take care of the problem right then right mm-hmm. so i really wasn't thinking about the fact that he had on a microphone <laughs> and the uh, sound guy heard what i said which is when i just leaned in and i said if you point that gun at me one more time i'm going to punch you in the effing throat mm. and you know what happened he started focusing, and he never pointed that gun at anybody after that. Huh. How about huh, that? That's amazing. Just, I mean, and I had told him like three or four times, don't swing that gun over here. No, don't do that. And if it hadn't been a photo, a, a TV shoot, I would have just booted him off the range. Was it a Franklin throat or a Farnsworth throat? Was it a... Fire truck. Fire Sounds truck. kind of like fire truck. <laughs> fire yes. truck throat. <laughs> Kind of like that. Something like that, yes, along those lines. Which is not a way that I speak generally. It's totally out of character. I don't usually do that. But, you know, it's one of those deals. It absolutely worked. 100% stopped it right there. Mm -hmm. And there's some residual effect, because I guarantee 
the rest of his career with guns, he'll be thinking more about it. It'll carry People over for him. He's going to look around and see if I'm there every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gresham's not crazy here. Crazy man okay. back there? I can be stupid again. Gresham's not around. But that's seriously, right. I bet you that that's lasting effects for him. So I you hope may, so. You may indirectly have saved somebody five years from now. I hope so. Mm-hmm. You never know. But uh, at least at that point, I didn't. I just didn't want to point it at me or the crew. Mm-hmm. And we were done with that because if that didn't work, uh, it was I was going to snatch him out of there and it was going to be over. So there you go. And you know what? Everybody needs to speak up. As we often say, everyone is a range officer. Mm-hmm. We always we have a safety briefing we do on our video shoots. Everybody's a range officer. Everyone here, anyone here can stop the action at any given time. Camera guy, sound guy, anybody. If you see something that doesn't look right, doesn't sound right, doesn't feel right, say something right then. We'll go back and shoot the video again. Well, that's what you need because you're intently focused on one or two things maybe. You can't possibly focus on that many things at once Mm -hmm. or that many people at once. So absolutely. Yep, and I know, and I like it. I like to have a safety brief when I'm out shooting with my buds anywhere, or we're going to go on a hunt, and you just do a real quickie, you know, a uh, 15 second deal. All right, everybody, we're going to keep actions open. When we walk back to the truck from hunting, we're going to have our actions open. The guns are going to be unloaded. We're going to keep guns uh, pointed down range, and you know, just a few little basic things there. Yeah. It's kind of like that, that, and that. All right, we've covered that. This is just a reminder. Right, it's the stuff the everybody same time, knows. They already know it. And at the same time, you're always keeping an eye on everybody because people lose their focus. They get, especially hunting, they get excited about hunting. Or first time shooters, you really have to be like, you know, within six inches of them where you can reach out and grab that gun at any given time. That's just a basic thing. Been there. Yeah, it's even worse with a handgun. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yes. Because all it takes is a flip of the wrist, (laughs) right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's such a shorter barrel. That's, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're pointing at somebody before you realize. Anybody would would actually benefit from taking the class to become a certified firearms instructor. It's amazing what you learn in the process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What to look so for. Besides that, you could then help spread the word to get more people shooting. Right. Ooh. Oh, God forbid. <sighs> we perpetuate. All right, guys. Well, next next week I will be doing the show from Gun Sight, where I will be just about to launch into a week long of frivolity, not frivolity, but fun with getting beat up. I'm a little bit apprehensive about a close quarters pistol class where it's basically, Jim, it's kind of combining the whole martial arts and guns thing. That'll cool. be interesting, though. Cool. Yeah. Bring, a, bring a knee brace or something. You might need it. You may find out. I'm <laughs> serious. Brace. Something. You may find I wonder out if I could mount a gun on a walker. Kind of <laughs> nice turret. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to be out at Arizona. We're going to be doing some stuff from Gunsight. In the meantime, uh, anybody who's checking on this, uh, jump on my Twitter feed because we're going to have, like, by the hour updates on the bump stock band because I, I'm hoping, got the fingers crossed, it's going to apply to everyone to stay where we, you don't have to turn them in. But that's all going to happen this Monday, which is like the day after I was talking right now. So that would be Monday the 25th. So tune in to Twitter. Follow me. I am at Gun Talk there. Take care. And uh, thank guys. We'll see you later. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk after show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk after show. Mm-hmm.